This is The Widow Podcast and I am Karen Sutton, The Widow Coach. I'll be supporting you through the loss of your life partner so you can find a more positive way through your grief. I want to give you hope after loss and to know that when you are ready, you can create a meaningful life for yourself with the help of me, Karen Sutton and The Widow Podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Widow Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me again. I wanted to talk to you in this episode about how we navigate our own health anxieties after we have lost a life partner. It's something that comes up a lot in my communities, um, in my, my membership. Remember my 12-month program, Finding Hope in Widowhood. I also see it a lot in my free support groups, Widowed and Rising. It also comes up a lot in my life. And at the moment, it is particularly heightened. I think I know why. I was actually supposed to record this podcast last week, um, but I couldn't because, because of my health anxieties. So I've taken some time over the weekend to do the things that help me, that support me in listening to my body and taking that time to make some changes to enable me to face a new week in a new way. Now, that doesn't mean it's gone away. It just means I've recognised maybe where I wasn't supporting myself in the best way that I can. So going back to the beginning, Simon, my husband, died in September 2016. And he literally dropped down dead. Yes, there there were some signs and symptoms that things weren't as they should be. He had high blood pressure. He was quite stressed. Um, He'd had some chest pains, which we had put down to a chest infection. And there were probably things that could have been done. However, he was a a, a busy man. He was 43. Never in a million years did he think that there was something so desperately wrong with him on the inside that he was literally going to die at the drop of a hat. And it's only in hindsight that you're able to reflect on these things and recognize that the, the the signs were there. His body was trying to tell him something and he wasn't listening. We weren't listening. That's not anyone's fault. It's life and it's a way of life for a lot of people. So Simon died. He had to have a post-mortem because it was a, an unexpected death. And I remember speaking to the coroner after they'd done the post-mortem. He died on a Sunday. This was on a Tuesday. And the coroner that I spoke to, he was so lovely. And he really wanted to reassure me that Simon hadn't suffered in any way. And, And it did. It did. He said to me, you know, Simon wouldn't have suffered. He wouldn't have felt any pain, which matches you know, the, the the story of events that have been relayed to me from the time that he died. He he never clutched his chest. He didn't shout out. He, he didn't tell anyone he was in pain. He just obviously felt a bit funny and, and pulled over. And the coroner said to me, you know, he, he wouldn't have died in, in terms of dying, the way Simon died was one of the best ways because he'd have known nothing about it. Sadly, he was too young. Um, he said, Simon may have felt a little bit dizzy, a little lightheaded, and then he would have died. And as much as that was very reassuring to me, 
in that Simon didn't stuff, suffer. He didn't know he was going to die. Every time now that I feel a little bit dizzy, a little bit lightheaded, a little bit out of sorts, and I don't know why, I'm immediately scared that I too am just going to drop down dead. And it's a real problem. And I'm having to, to, to do the work. You know, I'm in my eighth year and it's still here. And this is, you know, this is just grief, isn't it? It's, it comes and goes, it ebbs and it flows. There's peaks and troughs, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it's still there, impacting in some way even as you you work through it and find your your way further down the line um you know immediately after simon died you know i i became obviously <laughs> increasingly concerned about my own health because i had two children you know my children were 9 and 5 at the time and i didn't want to leave them without a parent and it, and I think when you lose somebody so close, whether that's through a long term illness, a short term illness or a sudden loss or, or anything else in between, um, you become incredibly aware of your own health and your own mortality and of those around you, actually. And you 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 are in a, a heightened state of alert and you know after Simon died I've I've said this before you'd have heard me telling you if you've listened to these podcasts if you're in my community that you know I ended up in A&E a couple of times after Simon died you know I was convinced I was having a heart attack I was convinced I was having a brain bleed that like the physical symptoms of grief amazed me I I had no idea that our feelings, our emotions could manifest in such a strong physical way. I didn't know that. I didn't have that understanding. I didn't have that knowledge. Now, by the way, listening to this podcast, I don't want you to, to leave this thinking that any physical symptoms that you might be having are as a result of grief. Always, always, always get checked out. Always see a doctor always make sure that you are in, in good health and you are okay because you can't just pin everything on grief. I think it's more a process of elimination. If you can't find anything wrong physically, it's very likely, I think, that it, it's stress, it's grief. And, and the impact that has on us is huge, which is why I bang on and on about self-compassion and self-care and self-love and taking responsibility and making those small changes to your life to support yourself because this is huge this is huge and our body is giving us information all the time and we're not listening to it a lot of the time we we think we can power on through we think we can just get on with it but actually we have to stop and listen. Um, and I think, you know, recently I have been really busy trying to support people in what I do and, you know, providing free support, paid support, in-person events, retreats, um, you know, doing the podcast. And it's a lot as well as as being a mum and everything else and all the other roles that I, I play in my life. And I think my grief has kind of been pushed to the side a little bit. I know it has. My eldest daughter recently turned 17 and, you know, quite a milestone getting her first car and learning how to drive. She's really growing up and, and I just feel so, so sad that she misses out on having her dad around her in life and that her dad misses out on sharing all these wonderful experiences with his daughters. And it's hard. I'm, I still have those moments where it's hard and and I don't always give it the time and attention that it needs because, like, 
like you, like everyone else, I'm human and life gets in the way and, and we don't always listen. We don't always take notice, but I think it's really important that we do. And our body will give us that information and we do need to listen. But that underlying anxiety is very hard to navigate and manage. It really is. You know, it's just every single sensation I experience in my body sends me on a, a, a path of, of fear and anxiety. You know, if I, if I get a, a, a bad headache, I think I'm having a brain bleed. If I get any sensations in my chest, I think I'm going to have a heart attack. You know, if I feel anything untowards in my body or something starts hurting, I'm, I'm worried I'm going to get cancer. You know, it's just, I'm so, I am so worried, you know, I'm so worried that I'm going to leave the children without any parents and, and that's huge. And I, and I don't think that's just because my children are younger. I think whatever the age or, you know, I speak to so many ladies in my communities who've got older children, who've got grandchildren and they don't want to, to leave their children behind. They know they, they still need them. And it is a really valid fear. It's a really normal response to what you've experienced, but it is really hard to navigate. And, you know, grief in itself, it's a stress response. It's having an, an impact on the body and, and that weakens our immune system. So, you know, underlying medical conditions that we, that we may have are often exacerbated. Um, we become more susceptible to illness. We might pick things up and become ill more frequently and we're tired. We're really tired, mentally, physically, emotionally exhausted. And this takes its toll on us. And we continue to, to keep going, to finding our way through it. We can feel a lot of pressure, a lot of expectation from ourselves, from society, from the people around us, from looking at other people that are grieving a similar loss, thinking, oh, they're doing better than me. I should be somewhere different. And, and we're maybe not giving ourselves a, enough time and I know I haven't, and I know I really haven't. And that's resulted in me getting into quite a pickle about my own health and well-being. And not only that, I know there's a there's a disconnect. I, you know, I'm 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 unaligned a little bit in some areas of my life. You know, one of the the biggest things that helped me in my grieving journey was to discover my core values and understand what was important to me and what I needed in life to live a fulfilling life and one of those things was was my health and I know that I am not living aligned with that value at the moment because I am not looking after my well-being I'm not supporting myself in the best way that I can I'm not resting enough I'm not taking time to do the things for me. I'm not allowing those moments of stillness and peace that I can find in my own way, in my journey, that are imperative to me living a life that can feel good again. You know, I, I was having a conversation at the weekend and I think for me, going through this journey, sort of the... The three things that I believe are most important to me in my life, these aren't my core values, but these are almost like the foundations, I think, of my life that I like to build upon. And again, they'll be different for everyone. But peace of mind. You know, my peace of mind is huge. And in, all, in order to have that, I need to be living aligned with my values and what's important to me. I need to be doing the best that I can in looking after myself and supporting myself, you know, from a health point of view, um, from a financial point of view, um, from a social point of view, from having fun to connection to family and friends, all of it, 
all of it and it's all about balance and and we're not always going to have the balance right of course we're not but having it as in place as we can so that we we can have that peace of mind that we know we are doing our best and I know recently I haven't been doing my best so therefore that 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 puts that out of kilter out of balance um so I have to bring that back into balance um so I think peace of mind I think health you know that making sure that you are supporting yourself in that area of your life is is for me absolutely necessary absolutely necessary and then as well love loving and and being loved in the best way that i can allows me to to grow and to feel safe and and that's with everyone around me that's you know with with my children that's with andy that's with my parents my mother-in-law simon's mum my friends my you know the people that i work alongside i love people and i value people and i think having a a supportive community around you is just so beneficial. We can't do this on our own. We can't. And having good people around us that support us, that love us, that that lift us up. And sometimes we have to go and find those people. They're not always that readily available to us. That they may not they may not already be in your world, but they are out there in the world and and you can find them. You can absolutely find them. I have met some incredible people through my grieving journey who I, I I truly, truly value and and couldn't be without, you know. So, you know, for me, having those three areas are really important. And I, I maybe haven't been working on those foundations, which makes everything else you know, what I've built on top of those foundations, it makes the, it makes it all wobbly. It makes it all wobbly. It, it It's not solid. And I have to go back to the bottom and work out how to really solidify those foundations. So what I'm building on top of that is strong. It's solid and it's safe because when it's not you you feel very vulnerable, you feel very exposed, you feel very afraid, you have no peace of mind, you are living on the edge, you are tying yourself up in knots. It's fear, it's anxiety, it's uncertainty. It's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a, it's an imbalance, it's a, an unalignment is that a word it is now (laughs) within yourself and it's such a horrible feeling it's such a horrible feeling and this is why I think it's so important that we do the work on ourselves that we really understand who we are this is what I do in my 12-month program because it's if we don't know who we are at our core, if we don't know what we are working to build on and what we are working towards and how we live aligned with our values, what our values are, how can we create something solid and safe and secure that that tethers us, that anchors us down, that roots us in something real, that allows us to grow and flourish and blossom and bloom and create something beautiful again I don't think we can and this is why you you know I think it's so important to to invest in yourself to take the time for yourself you are the greatest asset that you have in life and if you don't have peace of mind if you don't have the ability to to look after your health your mental health your physical health your social all of those areas and you're able to love and be loved like for me what is there what is there without those things? Because I can't build a life if those things aren't in place. Now, your things will be different to mine. Some of my things might resonate with you. Those foundations, you might think, do you know what? Actually, yeah, that they, they, really, they really do speak to me. They might not. 
but explore yours and and actually you, you know you discover these things by going deep asking the right questions really figuring out what is within us and it's not an easy process and it's not always a very comfortable process but my god it's worth it because now I have the ability when things become a bit wobbly and a bit shaky that I can go right back down to the basics and I can listen to my body and what it's telling me and I can start to implement the changes I can start to recognize where I am not maybe looking after myself in the best way that I can And I want to, because not only do I want to live a long, fulfilling, meaningful, beautiful, peaceful life, I want to do it with a peace of mind, with good health, and with a lot of love around me. So... I obviously haven't been looking after myself. I am paying the price for that. And and it's not been much fun. So for me, my information from my body 100% has been to slow down. Allow yourself some time and space to stop and pause and breathe and be. Because I've just been doing too much. And so, I, you know, I really have. I've created some stronger boundaries around my day to day life. I've I've been on some really lovely long walks. I've eaten better. I've slept more. I've rested. I've been reading a, a book that I love. And being more mindful. I've been far more present. And I think... This is one of my biggest challenges is that when I get caught up in my own head, I start to create a future that is bleak because I'm worrying and I'm I'm creating a story in my own head and I have to recognize where I'm doing that and I have to bring myself back to the present moment. I have to look at the evidence. I have to ask myself, you know, what evidence have I got to support where I am and and almost find counter evidence for the beliefs that I'm creating in my head about my future that aren't so good. So I have to come back to the here and now. I have to get out in nature, really appreciate the beauty of it, look around me. I'm working very hard on gratitude. I'm waking up every morning and I am giving thanks. I am giving thanks for my life for another day, for my girls, for what I do, for having purpose, for health, for the air in my lungs, the sight in my eyes, the birds singing outside my bedroom window, for possibilities, for opportunities, for freedom, for choice, for growth. And that's really helping me step into my day in a much more positive way with gratitude in my heart and it is uplifting and it feels better. I'm taking time in my day to repeat my gratitudes. I create positive affirmations that really speak to me, you know, just helping me to support myself in my journey and and say these affirmations to myself that, that speak to me that feel good, that uplift me. It's, you know, meditating, taking deep breaths, sharing your anxieties and your worries with the people around you, bringing yourself back to this moment, recognizing where your thought patterns are taking you and and changing them, shifting them a little bit. You know, it's recognizing, you know, when you're making up a story and thinking something's really wrong, something's going to happen to me and saying, you know, just wrapping your arms around you in a moment and saying right here right now I am safe I'm okay and I am loved and taking those deep breaths and reminding yourself that in those moments that you are okay and to breathe you know our breath is a very powerful powerful tool that we can utilize at any one time so 
understand that these health anxieties are a natural response to your loss. They are valid, they are real, and so many of us experience them. Have regular checkups, go and see your GP, get some support, share your concerns, but also make sure that you are supporting yourself in the best way that you can, that you're looking after your health, your mental, physical, emotional health. You are taking time for you. Grief is heavy. Grief is hard. Grief is exhausting. And adjusting to a life without your person by your side takes a lot. And we are already running on empty. Our capacity to take on more than we are already are dealing with is very low. And it's only us that can do this work. It's only us that can support ourselves. We have to take responsibility. And that can be hard. That can be really hard. But it's important because when we take control, when we support ourselves in the best way that we can, we feel more in control. We feel better when we are taking steps to support ourselves. It puts us back into the driving seat of our lives slowly, very slowly, but surely. So just please, you know, if you are worried, get checked out. And then you have the information um, to, 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 you know, to give yourself the facts of where you are at in life. Get yourself the support that you need. But above all, listen to your body. It is giving you information all the time. You will find a way. You will work your way through this. As much as this is my truth right here and now, and this is my eighth year, this isn't my whole truth. This isn't how my life has always been since Simon died. I I have had, you know, much longer periods of time where my health anxiety has been there. It's always there, but I have it under control more. I'm doing more to support myself and it's not having such an impact on my life. And the reason it is having such an impact on my life right now is because I haven't been supporting myself. I haven't been showing up for myself in the way that I'd like to, that I have been and that I could be doing. And that's all down to me. And I have to make those changes and and bring back into my life the things that bring me that peace of mind so that I can live a wonderful life after loss and you will too and you will veer off the track sometimes you will go off in a different direction life happens and it will continue to happen just like it has to me but we get to bring it back on track you know when we've done that work when we know what works we know what's important we get to bring it back on track it's not about expecting yourself to be perfect we're not perfect we're never going to be but when we have more knowledge we have more power And we are able to rectify these things in our lives far more effectively and quickly than if we don't have that knowledge and that power. But we've got to figure it out first. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. As always, if you have found this episode helpful, informative in any way, please recommend it. If you are in any other widow groups, if you know any other widows, share the episode. And I would be incredibly grateful if you are listening on on Spotify, um, that you could leave me a, a review would be wonderful. It helps me to reach more people. And we all know how important it is to find things that help us, that support us, that offer us that hope, that light in the darkness because it's a hard journey and I don't want anyone to feel like they're alone. So please like, share, subscribe, leave a review, whatever it is you can do to help me to reach others would be an amazing thing to do. Amazing way of giving back. So thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Sending you lots of love as always. And I will see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to The Widow Podcast with me, Karen Sutton. If you would like to be part of a supportive community of people who understand your grief, 
come and join my free Facebook group, Widowed and Rising. And make sure you tune in to the next episode of the Widow Podcast. Bye.